Great. Thank you so much, Dr. Dangus, uh, Dr. Sharma, Dr. Kinney. Uh, really, uh, it's an honor for me to be here and speak. And I'll be starting off the DES war by talking about Zions and why uh, I think it has the best data. I have no disclosures to report. To start off a little bit of a light-hearted note, I thought I would kind of contrast what I'm going to talk about to the decisions that some of us have to make. LeBron James, in the middle of the NBA Finals, he's really struggling a few years ago where he was going to make money, make millions of dollars, so on and so forth. And uh, fortunately for us in the cath lab taking care of patients, uh, our decisions, I think, based on the accumulated evidence and accruing evidence, have become uh, much easier. <coughs> And just to start things off, as we know, the uh, Zions platform has three key components, uh, the Everolimus drug, uh, fluoropolymer, and the thin uh, 81 micron uh, cobalt chromium alloy is the, uh, is the metallic backbone. I think it would be important to just to go over briefly some of the uh, preclinical experimental data highlighting the biological reason for the clinical uh, observations we see with respect to this stent. First is this notion of uh, floor passivation. What is that exactly? This is essentially a biological response that's elicited upon application of these fluorated uh, floor polymer coatings. And this is shown graphically very nicely in this rendering of this Dacron graph without such coating. You can see it's, it's embedded with a lot of uh, thrombotic material, platelets, so on and so forth. And at the bottom you can see what happens when you apply, apply the coating, that thrombotic material is essentially absent. Looking at this in a more sort of quantitative way, this is elegant data uh, by a group looking at um, uh, in vivo and ex vivo physiologic assay, showing here on the far left the degree is sort of at a reference of thrombogenicity with just a bare metal 81 micron thin stent strut, and showing you in the goal what happens when you again apply the fluoropolymer, you get about a 25% reduction in degree of platelet cell adhesion, concordant with what we saw in the Dacron graft. Also, you can see in the middle blue what happens if you increase the thickness of the stent struts. Again, you strongly augment the degree, the degree of thrombogenicity. Well, what about other determinants of thrombotic risk or vascular healing, such as inflammation? These are data from a uh, atherosclerotic rabbit model comparing uh, inflammation in Zions or Resolute, another contemporary DS comparator, and then bare metal stents. And what you can clearly see is that the degree of inflammation here quantified by inflammatory cells per stent strut were markedly and substantially lower with the Zions compared to either Resolute or, or BMS. And importantly, this was at a 28-day follow-up. So the clinical uh, evidence today, just to go from the sort of the basic into the clinical, this is a, a representative slide actually used by Dr. Hermiller in the past, uh, looking at the large evidence base, over 30 randomized trials, 40,000 plus, plus patients, and just kind of breaks down the sort of overwhelming evidence base we have with respect to the cobalt chromium EES or Zions platform in, in, in PCI. I really uh, can't go through all of this in detail, of course, so I'm just going to highlight a couple key um, aspects one of which is going to be the comparisons that have been um, uh, that have already occurred and continue to go between the Zions V cobalt chromium EES and the Promus Element family of family of stents. Key thing to remember here is that the platinum chromium Promus Element stents differ on one component. That's the metallic alloy. Here we have platinum chromium versus cobalt chromium. You can see the differences in the composition here in these pie charts. Other than that, they're the exact same uh, drug, Everolimus and um, the uh, uh, exact same polymer. So what do the data show? These are the uh, results of the pivotal uh, platinum trial followed up now to three years. And you can see essentially the uh, cobalt chromium Zion stent uh, at the three year uh, endpoint having a rate of an adverse event 7.1% for target lesion failure, the platinum chromium 5.9%, non-significant hazard ratio of 0.84. So certainly substitution of cobalt chromium in this study with the platinum chromium alloy did not yield any significant advantages. Essentially the results were comparable or non-inferior to one another. It's important to note, though, that this trial was quite selective. There was a lot of angiographic exclusion criteria. For example, true bifurcation lesions, excess calcium, or thrombus were actually exclusion criteria. And in fact, 90% of patients had only one lesion treated. So these results notwithstanding, one has to think about these trial results within the context of generalizability to contemporary PCI practice. And therefore, we have a follow-up trial, the Platinum Plus trial. These are data looking at a similar endpoint of target uh, vessel failure here out to one year. And again, you can see the uh, results for the Zion stent in the bottom bar here showing a cumulative event rate of 3.2% at one year, and in contrast, a promise element of 4.6%. Again, event rates were lower than expected, but this was a much more encompassing real-world uh, uh, trial. Uh, only exclusion was an EF less than 20%. Multiple vessels were treated in 48%. And you can see these confidence intervals just barely uh, overlap, and you have a borderline uh, result of a 0.08 
rate um, at, at one year. So in aggregate, I think you can certainly say, again, substitution of the platinum chromium, but keeping everything else the same not, is not necessarily providing any apparent advantage. And in fact, in higher risk lesion or patient subsets, it appears perhaps that the science is outperforming uh, Promus element, at least based on these data. What about uh, Resolute? We're all familiar from this primary paper. This is the primary uh, result from the Resolute All-Comers trial uh, at one year. Uh, Dr. Saroy is published in New England Journal of Medicine in, in 2010. And we're aware at the one-year endpoint, there was this signal for increased thermotic risk at Zotarolimus uh, compared to Everolimus, which has been investigated in its substantial detail. And certainly, when we look at landmark analysis or further analyses looking at one year beyond, we see no further divergence of this safety signal. But I think it is important to, not, uh, to, to be aware of this, and also, if you look at the x-axis, most of this action is happening in the first 30 days. And that's important because it highlights the fact that even in the contemporary DES era, most of our adverse thrombotic events are occurring very early on. And in fact, when we get later on, beyond perhaps three to four months, risk of adverse events markedly diminishes. And I think that becomes very clear when we look at data examining the impact of DAP cessation at different time intervals. So again, these are data in the red that were just published in European Heart Journal by Silbert colleagues looking at pooled uh, data from the Resolute uh, family of trials, and in the, in the blue are pooled data from the Zions uh, family of trials uh, presented by Dr. Moran uh, last year. And what you can see here, among patients who never have DAP interruptions, rates of uh, definite probable stent thrombosis are essentially equal. Similarly, if you interrupt dual antiplatelet therapy one year and beyond, you can really see, and again, no real differences in rates of, in rates of stent thrombosis, but again, that first month, when we're really concerned about patients, particularly in patients who are stopping dual antiplatelet therapy, you can see an almost threefold incremental risk for stent thrombosis among those patients um, getting a resolute everolimus eluting, uh, uh, zotarolimus eluting stent compared to, compared to Zions. Well, what about biodegradable polymers? Um, you know, certainly we um, got conditioned, I think, from the first generation DS experience that all polymers are bad. They promote uh, inflammation, diminish vascular healing. And certainly if we can substitute the polymer completely and have a biodegradable polymer, we should be better. We should be safer. Well, what do the data show us? Not a lot of data to date. A couple of randomized trials that have about one year follow-up comparison to the Zion stent. And uh, here are the results at one year looking at stent thrombosis rates for both of these. And what you can see again, neither one of these studies again was powered for the endpoint of stent thrombosis. However, two different st studies using the same comparators, you can see concordant reductions in stent thrombosis rates numerically lower with Zions compared to a biodegradable degradable platform. Again, we're not able to say that Zions is safer uh, based on these types of data, but certainly hypothesis generating and certainly speak to the fact that again, replacing the polymer with a biodegradable degradable one, at least based on these studies, is not giving us, again, any distinct advantages in terms of safety. And finally, what about bare metal stents? Of course, it's sort of the last bastion of safety. Uh, we all sort of intuitively believe, and this paradigm is being tested now, about whether or not the bare metal stent is the safest, or in fact, are there other platforms out there that are even safer? These are results from the examination trial, comparing in a STEMI cohort, 1,500 patients, comparing Zion's uh, stent to uh, bare metal vision, um, the vision stent, and here are the primary results at one year. And what you can see, in terms of, in terms of uh, a patient-oriented endpoint, including safety, uh, all-cause death and MI, and efficacy revascularization, no significant difference, again, out to one year, comparing Zion's V division in this, uh, in this STEMI trial. However, again, the reason we would use a bare metal stent is really for safety purposes. It's going to be for stent thrombosis. So what happens if we follow up patients a little bit longer, out to two years? These are the rates of stent thrombosis in the different arms now at two years, when rates of uh, DAP adherence are quite similar between groups. Again, in the bare metal stent arm, we can see a, a rate of 2.8 percent, the Zion's arm 1.3 percent, a little over 50 percent reduction, and um, a modest statistically significant result. Again, suggesting, not confirmatory, but suggesting that in this setting the Zion stand is in fact even safer than a bare metal counterpart. I think one uh, point that really becomes apparent when looking at any of these uh, contemporary trials that, uh, that are emerging and are iteratively evolving is that a lot of these studies are becoming non-inferiority analyses, event rates are certainly dropping, and it becomes hard to make very strong inferences. And therefore, a lot of new uh, techniques have emerged. Um, almost every uh, couple of months, we're seeing a new paper that are looking at these network or mixed treatment comparisons, and a lot has been written about them, but essentially what's happening is you're taking stent A versus stent B, which is a direct comparison, and as long as stent 
stent A and stent B had some direct comparison and they, that was common, you can also perform these indirect comparisons. And almost these pooled analyses, indirect analyses, are, are almost necessary nowadays because of the low event rates we're seeing in our trials. And this is the landmark uh, paper by Palmarini and colleagues published in Lancet 2012 showing using this methodology, 49 trials, over 50,000 patients, the cobalt chromium EES, significant reducing event rates compared to uh, the resolute first generation and even bare metal stent. Now I'll just, I'll just go to my conclusion slide. So I think in conclusion, what we can say is that the Zions Cobalt Chromium EES platform certainly has unique properties, reduce thrombogenicity, reduce inflammation, and, and certainly promote vascular healing. I think the clinical evidence base, both from direct randomized and indirect comparisons, are consistent with these unique properties. And then finally, as Dr. Ormiston et al. said in an editorial in April 2012 that has since been substantiated by ongoing data, is that the Cobalt Chromium EES should be regarded as a standard against which future design improvements are compared. Thank you.